Hello again, uh, Math 200 Statistics students. Um, on section 2.3, I think you're going to like this one because you'll be very familiar with the things that are taught here. We are talking about measures of central tendency. That, In other words, we have a data set and we're trying to see kind of what the overall data set is like uh, for the most part. So we're looking at like the middle of it. All this data, let's look to see what the average or the median or the mode is. Okay, so mean, median, and mode. Mean, the mean of a data set is the average of it. It is the sum of all the data entries divided by the number of entries. It's just like you're finding the average of your grades. All right, so the population mean, okay, here's two different symbols. All right, the population mean is this weird symbol here. It is the Greek letter mu, M-U, M-U, mu. All right, uh, it's, which kind of fits it because it kind of looks like an M and it kind of looks like a U. So put it together, it makes mu. It's a Greek letter, lowercase the Greek letter. And it is this, the uh, mean of an entire population. So it's the sum of all the X's divided by big capital N, which is every, every, uh, the, the entire number of things in the, whatever the population is. Whereas the sample mean, the symbol is X with a line on top of it. It's called X bar. X bar. And it's the same formula, but it's over little n, lowercase n, which just means the, num the total number of things in the sample. So not an entire population. All right. So example one, finding a sample mean. The weights for a sample of adults before starting a weight loss study are listed. What is the mean weight of the adults? It's very simple. Add all these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weights, add them together, and then divide by seven. And you get that the average weight of these adults is 258.6 pounds. It says round the last calculation to one or more decimal place than the original data. So since the original data is to the ones place, then they went one extra place to the tenths place with this uh, answer. All right, simple, simple, simple. The median of a data set is the value that lies in the middle of the data, but this is really important, when the data is written in order. It could be from least to greatest or greatest to least, but it has to be in order before you can find the median. All right, if it's not an order, you find the middle number and it's not an order, you have not found the median. You just found a random number. All right, the median measures the center of an ordered data set by dividing it into two equal parts. When the data set has an odd number of entries, the median is the middle entry. All right, let me show you what that means. Okay, so. All right, so let's say you had um, these numbers here. Let's say you had 3, 4, 5, uh, 10, 10, 11. Uh, let me give it one more. Uh, 17. Okay, now we have to find the median. First of all, is it written in order? Yes, it is. If it wasn't, we would need to rearrange it in order. All right, well, let's just count toward the middle. Okay. Uh, there, let's, uh, eliminate the three and the 17, eliminate the four and the 11, eliminate the five and the 10. And what's left, there's one single middle number. It is 10. So 10 is the median. All right. But what if we had three, four, five, 10, 10, 11. Now where's the middle? Well, eliminate the three and the 11, eliminate the 10 and the four. But now we have two numbers in the middle, five and 10. So the way that we find the median is we take the average of those two numbers, take the mean of those two numbers. So the, the middle or the mean of 5 and 10 is 7.5. So even though 7.5 is nowhere in the data set, 7.5 is the median. Okay. So if we're finding the median of these numbers, it's going to be 268. Well, if it's written in order, is it? Yes, it's in order, so it is 268. All right. If you had to do it with these, though, then you'd have to average 235 and 268, and you'd get 251.5, so the median would be 
for that example. The mode of a data set is the data entry that occurs with the greatest frequency. A data set can have one mode, more than one mode, or no mode. Or it can have commode. I'm just kidding. A commode is a toilet. Don't I'm just that was a joke. Alright, when no entry is repeated, the data set has no mode. So when there is nothing repeated, when everything occurs only once, there's no mode at all. When two entries occur with the same great greatest frequency, each entry is a mode and the data set is called bimodal. It can be bimodal or trimodal uh, or quad modal or whatever. Um, so, but you need to find the one that occurs most often. And if there's more than one that occurs most, you know, the same amount and both of them are most often, then it can be more than one. So let's find the mode of this data set. Well, 235 is the only one that occurs twice, so the mode is 235. All right, this one, it says, at a political debate, a sample of audience members were asked to name the political party to which they belonged. Their responses are shown on the table. What is the mode of the responses? Democrat, Republican, Independent, other, or don't know. Uh, in this particular sample, you have 46 Democrats, whereas that's the highest one. So Democrat is the uh, mode of that data set. All right, another thing we have to learn is this definition of an outlier. An outlier is a data entry that is far removed from the other entries in the data set. While some outliers are valid data, other outliers may occur due to data recording errors. A data set can have one or more outliers causing gaps in a distribution. Conclusions that are drawn from a data set that contain outliers may be flawed. Now we will determine later a more precise mathematical definition for an outlier to, to be able to determine what data should count as outliers. In other words, like how far removed does it need to be to actually be categorized as an outlier. We're going to learn later uh, how to determine that. But you can see in this example here, uh, over here in these numbers, that all of these numbers are in the 20s, but you have this one outlier that is 65, and that's the ages in a class. So you have like one uh, older adult that decided to go back to school and that person's age is an outlier for the class. All right. Example six, find the mean, median, and mode of the sample ages of students in the class shown at the left. Which measure of central tendency best describes a typical entry of this data set? Are there any outliers? Okay. So the mean, you just add them all up, divide by the number of data entries you are, and you get 23.8. The median, uh, you'd have to put them in order and then find the middle and you would get 21.5. The mode is the one that occurs most often and that would be 20. Okay, let's read this interpretation. The mean takes every entry into account, but it's very influenced by the outlier. The outlier drags that mean up a lot. Uh, the median also takes every entry into account, but it does not have, it's not nearly as affected by the outlier because that 65 would count the same as if it was a 24 or 25 because you're just counting toward the middle. So it wouldn't matter that it was a 65 when you're finding the median. Uh, so I think the median is going to be the best one to uh, describe a typical entry in the data set. But let me keep reading the, the interpretation. Uh, in this case, the mode exists, but it does not appear to represent a typical entry. Sometimes a graphical comparison can help you decide which measure of central tendency best describes the data set. The histogram shows the distribution of the data and the locations of the mean, median, and mode. In this case, it appears that the median best describes the data set. All right, the median appears to be much more kind of just in right dead in the middle in the middle of that data. So if there are no outliers, then the mean is often the best way to describe a typical data entry. But if there is an outlier, the median is oftentimes the best uh, representation of a typical data entry. Okay, weighted mean and the mean of grouped data. Sometimes data sets contain entries that have a greater effect on the mean than do other entries. To find the mean of such, data, such a data set, you must find the weighted mean. 
All right, a weighted mean is the mean of a data set whose entries have varying weights. The weighted mean is given by this. All right, so what this X bar, the sample mean, is equal to the sum of each data entry, X, times the weight of that data entry. All right, divided by the total weight. So a lot of times this is how your grades are determined because tests often count more. They have greater weight than, let's say, daily grades or practice or whatever. So let's take this example here. You're taking a class in which your grade is determined from five sources. 50% from your test mean, 15% from your midterm, 20% from your final exam, 10% from your homework, I'm sorry, from your computer lab work, and 5% from your homework and it gives you these scores. What is the weighted mean of your scores? The minimum average for an A is 90. Did this person get an A? All right. Okay, so here's how we'll calculate it. We have an 86, all right, an 86 test mean and test count 50%. So I'm gonna multiply that by its weight and I'm gonna add uh, I have a 96 midterm and midterm counts 15%. So that's times 0.15. That's its weight. All right. Plus the next one is an 82 and that counts 20%. So that's times 0.2 plus 98, which counts. That's the computer lab work that counts. What does that count? That counts 10%. So times 0.1 plus 100 homework times the homework counts 5% so times 0.05 and that is divided by the weight of all, all all these weights added up well if you add up all these weights it's going to add up to 100% or add up to 1 so it's just divided by 1 so I don't even have to divide it by 1 but I wanted to put that on on there all right, that comes out to be about an 88.6. So didn't quite get an A with that, uh, with that weighted average. All right, that's called a weighted mean. All right, the mean of a frequency distribution for a sample. You can find the mean for a frequency distribution by following this formula. X bar is equal to the sum of the particular uh, score or weight or whatever this is times its frequency divided by the total number of data entries. All right. Where X and F are the midpoint and the frequency of each class. So X is the midpoint. F is the frequency for that particular class. All right. So let us find the mean of this particular frequency distribution. It's pretty simple. It gives us the midpoint and it gives us the frequency for each class. So you just multiply 12.5 by 6 and you get that. Multiply 24.5 times 10 you get that. And so you just multiply them all each midpoint times its frequency. And uh, when you do all that, then you just add all those up. And then you divide by the total number of data entries, which is the sum of all these frequencies, which in this case is 50. So that divided by 50 gives us a final answer of about 41.8. Okay. Now, the shapes of distributions. A graph reveals several characteristics of a frequency distribution. One such characteristic is the shape. A, a frequency distribution is symmetric when a vertical line can be drawn through the middle of the graph of the distribution, and the resulting halves are approximately mirror images. Approximately mirror images. So, like this one here, if I draw a line down the middle of that distribution, I'm gonna. It's gonna be the same. It's gonna be symmetrical about that line. Okay, a frequency distribution is uniform, aka rectangular, when all entries or classes in the distribution have equal or even approximately equal frequencies. 
A uniform distribution is also symmetric. So this is an example of a uniform or rectangular distribution. If you cut this down the middle, it's also symmetric. A frequency distribu distribution is skewed when the tail of the graph elongates more to one side than to the other. A distribution is skewed left or negatively skewed when its tail extends to the left. A distribution is skewed right, positively skewed when its tail extends to the right. All right, now this to me used to confuse me out because my intuition kind of made me think differently than the definition of it. See, what I would used to think like is if I saw this distribution, I'd say, well, more of the data is over here on the right side, so that's skewed right. But that's actually the opposite of what the definition says. The tail is the elongated part. All right, so the fact that we have these extra data entries running out to the left over here, kind of just run, it kind of extends it out to the left, stretches it to the left, means that it is skewed left. And likewise, on this one here, since we have these lower entries kind of stretching out the tail, the right tail here to the right, this is skewed right. Read this. The mean will always fall in the, in the direction in which the distribution is skewed. For instance, when a distribution is skewed left, the mean is going to be to the left of the median. Or if it's skewed right, it'll be to the right of the median. All right, and I think that is the end. But I do want to sh did want to show you something uh, that you can do in your calculator. I wanted to show you how you can find the mean and the median in your of a data set in your calculator. Right, so if I'm going to put all these ages of this these people in this class into my calculator, all right, I'll show you how to do that. All right, let me quit what I'm doing there and clear all this out. I'm going to go to Stat. When I go to the stat menu, I'm going to click edit. That allows me to edit my lists. I'm going to clear L2 that I put in earlier. The way that you do that is you go up to L2 and you hit the clear button, then you hit enter, and that will clear that column. I'm going to do the same thing for L1. I'm going to clear it. So I'm going to click up to L1. I'm going to hit clear, enter, and that will clear the entire column. Now I'm going to enter all these data, data entries. 20, enter, 20. Enter. All right, I'm going to pause the recording and go ahead and enter the rest so you won't have to win. Okay, I now have all the data entered into L1. I go back to Stat. I go to, I click to the right over to the Calculate menu, and I want to calculate the one variable stats. And that's going to give me a lot of basic things uh, about this data set. The list is going to be L1. I don't have a frequency list. On this example, I just all I did was enter in the data uh, entries into L1. I don't have a so leave the frequency list blank. I click down, I click calculate, and it tells me all kinds of things. X bar that is the mean is 23.75. All right, it tells me all this other stuff, which we'll talk about later. All right, N is the number of, uh, of data entries I entered. The S sub X is actually the it is the uh, the standard deviation uh, if it's of the of the sample. The sigma sub x is a standard deviation if this were a population. We haven't talked about that yet. We'll talk about it later. Okay, Q1 median, Q3 max. So the minimum data entry was 20. Q1 and Q3 we'll talk about later. Um, those are the upper and lower quartiles. The maximum data entry is 65, and the median is 21.5. So it tells me the median and the mean which is what this part of what this uh, section was about all right there's also a way to uh, do um, a frequency distribution the mean of a frequency distribution I'm going to clear this out and I'm going to show you another example all right so look uh, look at this example uh, what I would do here to find the mean of this frequency distribution is I would put all these class midpoints into L1. I would put all these frequencies into L2. And then I would hit stat. And I would click calculate one variable stats. And this time for the list, I would put L1. And for the frequency list, since I put the frequencies in L2, I would put L2 right there. All right. And then I would click calculate and it would give me the 
uh, the mean and media, all that, the median and everything for that frequency distribution. All right, one more thing I want to show. You can also do that for uh, these these weighted, the weighted like GPA kind of problem. Uh, you can put the scores into L1 and the weights into L2. Do the list as L1, the frequency list as L2, and it'll also calculate the, the, the mean and everything that way. All right, that's, I think, all you need to know for section uh, 2.3. Good luck on the assignment. I'll see you in section 2.4.